whenever they saw that turn, that mass kind of uprising of people saying, we don't want corruption, all the neocons and all the money just came pouring in. Um, and they made it possible. They openly supported this kind of revolution. You're listening to The Corbett Report. Hello, friends. James Corbett here in Acapulco, Mexico, this time joined by Luke Rudowski of WeAreChange.org. I'm sure you all know him by now. And of course, someone who concentrates on a lot of different issues. But as I understand, Luke, one of your main concentrations right now is Ukraine and what's happening there. Why is this so important at this particular moment? I mean, right now, it's pretty much a proxy war between the U.S., EU, NATO, and Russia. Uh, there's a big standoff, and there's a lot of key players, and that, and I think it's really important because we're either getting Western propaganda or Eastern propaganda. Uh, it, so it's really hard to really find out exactly what's happening in this very key, important European country because of all these influences and all these reportings that are uh, contradicting each other. So I think it's very important to break down because this could seriously lead to um, very serious escalations, especially with Russia, that could possibly cause uh, a war between these two global superpowers that are just ripping apart um, this country and creating mass suffering with so many people who are just stuck in the middle of this tug of war uh, between these two uh, major powers. Well, let's break down the Western propaganda first, because it's one everyone is subjected to on a daily basis on CNN or what have you, where, of course, everything is framed as, is Putin going to attack? Will Putin invade? What's going to happen with Putin? And of course, we see a lot of that propaganda, which neglects the Western side of this conflict. Tell us about some of those involvements and engagements that are starting to make this, uh, uh, that have made this entire conflict possible. Well, of course, um, from the very beginning with the revolution in Kiev, we saw uh, the USAD, the National Endowment for Democracy. We saw George Soros and some of his organizations that he's loosely affiliated with just throw a bunch of money and support. All the neocons from the West, John McCain, came running in as soon as people were against the corrupted government of uh, Yanushevich. And of course, Yanushevich was corrupt. He was, uh, but he was pro-Russia, and he, he implemented policies that were pro-Russia. Whenever they saw that turn, that mass kind of uprising of people saying, we don't want corruption, all the neocons and all the money just came pouring in, um, and they made it possible. They openly supported this kind of revolution. Uh, with this revolution, um, we pretty much came back to another place, but now we have another corrupted individual, Poroshenko, which even according to uh, WikiLeaks documents and those diplomatic cables is a corrupt official, but he's a corrupt official that has ties to the U.S. And of course, that's going to fit in better because they want uh, Ukraine to join uh, the European Union. They want a closer connection with them. Ukraine um, is very important in so many different geographical aspects, but the main one, not only its vast amounts of farmland, uh, but also its very uh, close proximity to Russia. And if you look at all the bases, all the NATO US bases around Russia, they are littered all over the place. So this would give uh, the US very key strategic locations very close, right on the border with Russia. And there's also a lot of um, consumer, also financial benefits, whether it's the IMF giving out the crack loans to this country and then rooting and robbing it blind, changing it law, changing the laws within the country, which we see happening, making it uh, very uh, profitable for, for companies like Monsanto to come in, which they have, they just set up a new office in, in Ukraine. Um, and now you see laws being changed saying that uh, we can do genetically modified uh, farming. Other people can come in and now buy up the land here. We see Poroshenko, who just came from the U, uh, UAE, um, and he just cut a deal for arms with the UAE uh, for defense. Uh, but in exchange for that, he's giving up uh, economic opportunities for the UAE in uh, Ukraine. So we're seeing just this country that was doing fine, doing good on its own. It's being sold to the highest bidders. You see all these influences coming in. Uh, Create, helping create this revolution. And of course, they came back to the same corrupted uh, politician, but now he's more likable to the corporate government, uh, NATO, US interests. 
Well, you raise a couple of extremely important points there. First of all, there's the NATO encirclement of Russia generally, which Ukraine is obviously a part of, which is, I think, part of that that key danger that you're talking about in the war scenario. But on top of that, you say about Ukraine being fine on its own. uh, Well, for the last couple of decades, it's been ruled by oligarchs of one form or another, a lot of whom have been in bed with Russia and have sent a lot of the oil money and done some cut some oil deals for their own personal benefit, not for the benefit of the Ukrainian people, which I think is the neglected aspect from a lot of the alt media coverage of this. So this is the Eastern propaganda kind of version of this. So what what uh, what do we need to know about uh, uh, the ultimate solution to this? Because it seems that the ultimate solution can't be simply to give money and power back to these oligarchs. It has to be some way of returning power to the people of Ukraine to let them determine. I said fine compared to what they're going through now. Their economy is destroyed. They have no energy in any way, shape, or form. The coal that they were supposed to be mining in that Donetsk region can't even be mined because of the war zones. Uh, The amounts of debt that they are indebted to Russia, um, especially when it comes to gas in the, what was it, $6 billion? They're never going to pay that off. So financially, um, you know, these superpowers want, okay, you're going to be indebted to us and work with us. And then they're vying for that power. They're vying for that money. The ultimate solution is really a hard one to to kind of throw out there because it's such a complicated mess. Uh, The answer to me wouldn't be uh, go with Russia. The answer wouldn't be go with the EU, EU, NATO. It would be why can't Ukraine just be a sovereign, independent country with no major ties, no major allegiances, and just uh, create their own kind of life and not um, not be ruled by these corrupted individuals that have ties to different people. But, but see, this is what happens. Whenever there's mass protests, whenever there's revolutions, there's always people who are going to come in and try to co-opt it. And that's exactly what happened. The people of Ukraine are, you know, just regular human beings. They're like us. They want a normal life. They don't want to be extorted uh, and robbed and looted. They are right now. They, they, they were robbed by the Russians uh, and extorted by them. And now they're being robbed and looted by the U.S. on such an extreme level. So we have to see both sides of this. None of the um, um, kind of um, situation that was happening before in Russia was okay. No, it extremely wasn't. And we have to acknowledge that as well. We have to understand that there's war crimes being committed by both sides of this conflict, not just one side. Uh, It's not just the U.S. is bad. Uh, all these situations are bad. The solution, again, I don't know. What what would be a solution? Uh, well, we have the IMF debt slave mastery problem. We have the uh, the, the military buildup problem. All, again, all of it from outside interference. Uh, I think autonomy has to be the answer, yeah. but how do they do that with an economy that's already been destroyed? How it's do we so build that up? Dependent on uh, foreign aid, crack loans, and, and debt that they're indebted to. So they're in, they're in an extremely horrible situation, especially written now with China also coming into uh, play right now, saying that uh, the U.S., a diplomat in China, pretty much just broke it down and and in simple terms said, the U.S. is pissing off Russia. They should just um, leave them hell alone and stop in, uh, mendling um, in this whole problem. So with China coming into this play, um, Ukraine can't be as um, strong-willed as it has been, especially against the separatists. Um, and and then and again, we, we, we're hearing both of these conflicts. How do you become sovereign? How do you become independent when you're so already tied down by all these corrupted in- individuals who sold your country down the road? Um, I, that's an answer. It's like Man, like... Yeah, it's not a political solution that's going to yeah, solve this. I wish I knew that, that question, but um, I wish I knew this, the, the solution to this problem, but I don't think anyone does. I think it's so convoluted. I think it's so complicated in, in just all aspects um, that there really isn't an answer, and sadly, uh, the people of Ukraine are screwed. We need a fundamental revolution and one that doesn't involve pitchforks at the White House or the equivalent, the Ukrainian equivalent. So I guess the crystal ball time, what's the next big shoe to drop? Is it the the debt problem? Is it the military buildup? What's going to happen? Uh, Right now, the ceasefire as of now is holding. Uh, but at the same time, people are still dying in other cities. Um, the buildup, you know, they're, they're taking, they're moving away the heavy artillery, but there's even People in the United States, there's two congressmen who came out saying we need to send more nukes into, um, you know, the Eastern Europe area. Uh, NATO is building up their bases, getting their troops ready all along the Eastern uh, Front. Russia, of course, is 
playing along into the same game, showing their uh, power, showing their might, doing nuclear tests all throughout the region as well. There's a lot of troops, a lot of money coming in from all these sources, and it's just building and building up. And, and, it, and it's holding for now, but anything could break at any single moment. Uh, what I see envisioning, we could either have a really horrible situation that could engage in an all-out war between the Western powers and the Eastern powers, or uh, the worst case scenario is Ukraine is screwed. And they are, sadly. Luke Rudowski, for the uh, three people in the audience who don't already know, tell us uh, where you can find more of your work. Uh, definitely check out uh, youtube.com forward slash we are change. I dedicate everything I can to give you all the information and the sources of everything we talk about uh, in almost every video that we do and also just creative stuff. So just check out the YouTube channel. Luke, nice to finally meet you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.